Good morning. Welcome to chapel at the Institute of Lutheran Theology. It's good to be able to welcome you here today. Reverend Timothy J. Swenson here, Dean of Chapel, and I'll preside at our service this morning. As we get into the service, if you've been able to download the order of service from the uh, files on the Teams page, uh, please take that at, out now as we are about to begin. Uh, as we get going in the service, uh, the title of the message today is God Tenderized. So, uh, let us begin then. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now to the litany. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It, it is, is he who sits, sits above, above the circle of the earth, and, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom, then, will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. We pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority. Give us such ears to hear, that we may listen to him as he forgives our sins and sends us out, bound by his authority, to preach good news to those bound in sin. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We turn now to the Gospel for the day. Mark Chapter 1, beginning in the 29th verse. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Greetings to you. Greetings on this day that the Lord has made a day for us to rejoice and be glad. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city gathered together at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. Mark 1. 32 to 34. Capernaum was a fishing village 
in the region of Gennesaret. I discovered online that its population was about 1,500, give or take a few. That makes it about the same size as the town where I attended high school. Capernaum, an important trading center of its day, covered about 15 acres. And we have learned several characteristics of the people, of its people, from our text. We know that people worshipped in the synagogue. From the text for the previous week, we are told that Jesus joined them there and cast out a demon. We know that the city had a well-developed gossip system. We know this because by the end of the day, the whole town gathered at Simon's house. The whole town at one doorstep. We know the people had great need. Many were disease-ridden and demon-possessed. We know those people longed for someone with authority who could address their needs. Jesus was the latest of the wonder-working rabbis to come along. We know. We know that despite their need, despite their great longing, the people still respected the Sabbath. They waited until sundown. The Sabbath was over. The next day had begun. They waited before they sought out heal healing for their sick and possessed, before they imposed themselves on Jesus. In the rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, the composer Andrew Lloyd Webber includes a scene. He depicts a scene of the people coming after Jesus, crowding in on him, taking away his personal space and insisting he make them whole, make them well, heal them and cure them. Some relevant lyrics. See my eyes, I can hardly see. See me stand, I can hardly walk. I believe you can make me whole. See my tongue, I can hardly talk. See my skin, I'm a mass of blood. Change my life, oh, I know you can. I believe you can make me well. See my purse, I'm a poor, poor man. Will you touch, will you mend me, Christ? Won't you touch, will you heal me, Christ? Will you kiss, you can cure me, Christ? Won't you kiss, you... Won't you heal me, Christ? The entire situation set up by the whole city gathering at one door for the sole benefit of healing their disease-ridden and their demon-possessed of their afflictions drives me to remember a scene from the heavenly throne room where God is holding court. This situation is prior to Satan, who is the prosecutor of the heavenly court, prior to Satan being cast down. As the Lord holds court, Satan enters the throne room. The Lord acknowledges his presence and asks Satan what he's been up to. Satan says that He's been going to and fro across the earth. God, the Lord, calls his attention to the person of Job, a unique man, blameless and upright, fearing God and turning away from evil. Satan comes right back at God with a memorable rejoinder. A that challenges the Lord. Does Job fear God for no purpose? Have you not put a hedge around him and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of 
his hands. Compare Job 1, 6 to 10. For a bit about Job, the book of Job is considered to be of ancient origin, perhaps even the first account to be told and then included in Scripture. Accordingly, Satan's challenge stands over the entire religious enterprise, confronting you as well as God with a question. Do you fear, love, and trust God for himself or for the benefits, the gifts, the blessings God provides? Can you say with any integrity that you worship God, that you walk blameless and upright, that you fear God and turn away from evil? Can you make that claim honestly? Must you not confess your bondage? Your bondage to your own self-interest. Your inability to escape the black hole of the religious person seeking God to receive a transformed life. Before I was made into a preacher of Christ, him crucified and him alone, I had a brief career in sales, in the home sales selling home improvements. At that time, the foremost guru of sales and marketing was a fellow named Zig Ziegler. He wrote books, conducted seminars, taught courses, teaching salespeople how to excel at their job. One of his most memorable pieces of wisdom was this little saying, sell the sizzle, not the steak. In other words, success at sales had little to do with the quality of the product, but much to do with the customer's anticipation of the product and its use in their lives. Successful salespeople created a desire within their customer, customers for the transformation the product could bring to their lives. Their lives would be happier and more satisfying, their personalities more acceptable and charming, their bodies more handsome, beautiful, or desirable because of the use of the product. Throughout the centuries of Christianity's great tradition, its preachers have sold the sizzle and not the steak. The God of the heavenly throne room is a tough piece of meat, hard to chew, difficult to swallow. The God of the heavenly throne room responds to Satan's challenge to his dare by giving Job over to Satan's pleasure, giving Job over to Satan, at first reserving only Job's person, but in the second instance, reserving only Job's life from Satan's reach. This God is not the stake people want. They demand the sizzle the benefits, the achievements, the blessings, the gifts, the sizzle and not the steak, the transformation, but not the reality of a God who even uses Satan as a tool, the reality of a God bringing on things such as these as transformation. Quote, punishments, crosses, and death, which are the most precious treasure of all, and the most sacred relics 
which the Lord of this theology himself has consecrated and blessed. Martin Luther, writing on the theology of the cross. Decidedly not much sizzle there. Only a tough piece of meat, difficult to chew, hard to swallow. Enter Jesus, God, tenderized. Jesus, not tough, but vulnerable. Jesus, who doesn't hand us over to Satan, but joins us beneath Satan's afflictions. Jesus, who didn't count his equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself, making himself nothing, a Lord submitting to bondage, a God taking on the likeness of a human. Jesus Christ became the new Adam for you. Who are the old Adam, the old Eve, the ones grasping after the benefits, the blessings, the gifts, grasping after the sizzle? Jesus Christ becomes the new Adam who endures the punishments, cross, and death for you. Yes, for you. Even while you are sinners bound to covet the sizzle and not the steak, Jesus God tenderized, because while you are in bondage to sin, death, and the power of the devil, you are the tough piece of meat. You are the one hard to chew. You are the one difficult to swallow. Jesus Christ, God tenderized frees you from your bondage, your toughness. Jesus Christ has tenderized you. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we turn now to our prayers, at the conclusion of each petition, you will be invited to respond uh, with these words, For Jesus' sake, and the response will be, Amen. Gracious Father, in the water and word of baptism you have worked upon me your stroke of grace, your coup de grace. It ended my misery in sin by killing me as your word promised in Genesis 2. Yet your word promised life in Jesus Christ. And so I've been raised up to walk in newness of life. Grant that whenever I fall behind your coup de grace, my preacher will hear my confession and absolve me of my sin. For Jesus' sake, Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, again and again pour out your death-dealing and life-giving word upon me, so that your Holy Spirit never ceases to work faith in me. By the life of Christ. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, you call me to the company of fellow sinners gathered around the preaching of your word and the giving of your sacraments. So grant that in conversation and consolation this company would be the communion of saints to me. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Glory, gracious Father. Your Son, Jesus Christ, my Lord, is my life. Grant that his story takes over my story and delivers me to neighborly usefulness. For Jesus' sake, Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, you have set my neighbors before me, opened my eyes to see their needs, and set my hands to their fulfillment. For Jesus' sake, Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, you have established the Institute of Lutheran Theology so that another generation of preachers may be raised up. 
hold it true to that task. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, until that day and hour which is known only by you, continue time and again to return me to the promises of my baptism, that I might endure in faith as long as the flesh adheres to me. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Give me a moment to switch cameras.